This is Fee Waybill, and you're about to watch the All Excess podcast with Danny and Tim. I know you're going to love it, so stay tuned. All Excess with Danny Zalesko and Tim Richards. I mean, you've had an amazing career, and your performances, you go back to, you know, your early days, you know, pre-tubes, tubes. I mean, you did a lot of irreverent things on stage. I mean... Still does. Yeah, yeah, but like, like back then, you were cutting edge you you forged the ground where, where did that creativity come from where do those ideas come from well i mean uh from a lot of different places i mean i was an actor uh or i, I i've been i ha, i am an actor and have been acting my whole life and i was in high school and college and i brought that uh that experience and then the art the prairie was and mike were artists and then we hooked up with kenny ortega who was uh, a brilliant choreographer and kind of coalesced all of those crazy ideas. I mean, I remember we used to do a bit called Fidel, where I would pretend I was Fidel Castro with a big <laughs> beard and camouflage and fake machine guns. And all of the girls dancers would have fake machine guns. And then during the song, they would rush out into the audience and they would capture people and bring them back on the stage. And we had built this wooden cage at the back of the stage on the top platform. And we'd stick them in a cage, this all black wooden cage cell. It was a cell and make them stay there the whole show. That's amazing. <laughs> And they would freak out and they would scream and yell and they would rattle the bars. And oh, I mean, you, you couldn't do that today. You couldn't do that. They're just. You guys cut you know, the ground. You, you made I used it. To, I, used to, I used to carry a chainsaw onto the airplane with me, a chainsaw with the blade and gas in it and take it to gigs and do the punk character, Johnny Bugger. And you know, swing a chainsaw around. Oh, and and you can't. I mean, obviously that, that's not going to happen anymore. And uh, so yeah, we were we got a little. I remember one time we played uh, in the early '70s. We played Alex Cooley's Electric Ballroom in Atlanta, and we were doing the punk thing with the chainsaw, and the cap came off the gasoline tank. And no. the chainsaw is running, and I'm swinging around my head and just spraying gas all over the stage <laughs> in the front row. And oh, I mean, that, that could have been a bonfire, you know, right there. And oh, you just, I can't tell you how many, how many. You guys, you guys defined fun for sure. Oh, boy. You, oh, should, boy. you should have seen the fun um, we had in Tucson one night. Let's hear this story. Um, we were at the uh, Temple of Music and Art. Oh, yeah. Dave, oh, yeah. Dave Malott was your pr production manager. Right. And um, there was two shows. And the second, and the the owner of the place, I don't know if you know if he's still alive or not. I can't remember. His name was Steve, but I don't remember his last name. Oh, big, 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 fat guy. And he owned this old theater. And at the end of the show, because they're being theatrical, at the end of the second show, they closed the curtains to open it back up for the next song, which would be the first encore. And they were going to be in completely different outfits and stuff was getting switched around backstage and stage by the stage hand. And the thing opens up, the show starts, and the room is filling with smoke because one of the old curtains caught on one of the lights overhead. Oh, right. And, and it was smoke. And, and and so we look, he looks up and, and he sees it smoldering and he goes, this isn't part of the show, kids. <laughs> and and he got off stage and, and we had to evacuate the venue into the courtyard, which right. was conveniently located across the street from the Tucson Police Department and 900 Tubes fans blown out of their minds by now <laughs> because the owner of the of the little theater decided the kids were thirsty and he brought about 10 kegs of beer illegally <laughs> into the venue oh, and sold it. So the cops come walking in to the, and they go, what's going on here? And we explained no problem for me. Uh, that you, you know, it's like one o'clock in the morning, but it's, you know, in that neighborhood by down by the convention center, it's not really 
I don't think there were homes right there. Maybe some. Right. Not a lot. And it, was, and it wasn't that loud outside anyway. It was just a bunch of people talking. And they come in and we explain what happens. They go, okay. And they're, they're turning around to leave. And one of the cops goes, do you have a beer license? <laughs> You're so, and it was after one o'clock oh, and they're goodness. pouring. Oh. So he goes, shut that down right now. I said, I've got to do this. I got to finish the show. You're not shutting that down. He goes, no, go ahead. We'll deal with this guy. And so he got uh, he got a big fine for doing that. Really? Yeah, but we finished the show. Could you imagine? And we went back and we put the fire out. It was like an old velvet curtains yeah. hanging yeah. across the front of this upper area, right against all the lights. It hadn't yeah. been, and it hadn't been fireproofed in like fifty years. And yeah. Yeah. and I don't know who it was. Somebody in your crew, an English guy, who was who? There was an English. Um, was it Bernie Boyle? Yeah. Bernie Boyle, possibly. Yeah, he I was. A, he was, was a Bernie Boyle, player. and he and and Bernie, you know, remember how dry and stoic he could be. And he looks at this oh, yeah. big old Steve Hutchinson. He looks at this big old Steve, and he goes, "When was the last time you had that fireproof?" Anyway, he goes, "When was the last time you had that fireproof?" Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't forget certain things, and that's over forty years ago. That was seventy-eight or seventy-nine. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I just ran, it's funny, I just ran into Bernie Boyle about a week ago at a restaurant here in, in LA and hadn't seen him for, you know, 20 years. And uh, and he came walking by our table and I went, Bernie, Bernie Boyle? And it, sure enough, Bernie Boyle. And he Did he have hair? There. He had hair, yes. And he still had his accent and he's, a, he's <laughs> like Lionel Richie's per, private uh, road manager guy. He takes care of all of Lionel Richie's private stuff. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice gig. Yeah. Apparently. Lionel, Lionel, Lionel's a good guy. Yeah. I will see you on uh, Saturday, the 21st. You bet you will. Saturday the 21st. Look forward to it. Okay. Well, thank you both. Thank all you, right. Pete. All Access with Danny Zalesco and Tim Richards. Hey, that, what a great looking book you got there. Thanks, Danny. I got it from my good friend, Danny. Oh, me? <laughs> I sure did. Hey, you know what would be a great idea? What's that? Why don't we bring those stories to life in real, everyday broadcasts with the stars from the book? Hey, let's call it All Access. Let's do a podcast. The All Access Podcast. What a genius idea. And this is the accompanying book. You need to get it. It's incredible. Filled with great pictures, stories, 40-plus years of Danny doing Danny and making you happy. You're going to love it. How embarrassing. <laughs> hey now.